Hello, this is RV Vagabond Jerry. And in this video, I'm going to tell you everything I personally know about the Starlink Internet system. I've been using mine for nine months now, and I'm going to give you a review of Starlink and my personal experience. I'm sitting right here, right next to the antenna. So let me tell you all I know about it and how well it's worked for me. Now when I want to store the antenna away, and I'm going to drive off, I put it in this compartment. It fits right here, right next to my folding scooter with the router. And I have an electrical outlet, 120 volt, right there. And one problem is that there's no on-off switch to the router. So I've got this plugged into my electric outlet where I click that switch on and off easily whenever I want to use it. Then when I want to use it again and I'm parked, I will pull out the antenna and the electric cord right there. And I just let the cord hang out right there because closing this door is not going to hurt the cord because it doesn't create a tight seal and the compartment has this rubber gasket all the way around it so that gives some cushioning leeway. The router is really simple. There's no switches or anything on it. It just has a place to put the electric cord and the cord to the antenna here. That cord to the antenna is 75 feet. But they also have a cord you can get that is 150 feet. And I've only needed this a couple times when I had to get way around a big tree to get a connection. It's best to start off by pointing the antenna to the north. And I try to park so that I can do it with the antenna right there. But sometimes the north is on this side. So I have to drag it around to the other side of the RV. And the antenna has an electric motor in here that will turn itself around to find a satellite. And sometimes I think I've got it pointed in the right direction and then I come out later and I find the antenna has moved itself around to find the correct satellite. It rotates and it will move itself back and forth that way as well. First, let me tell you the basics about how the Starlink system works. As of February 2024, they have about 5,400 satellites roaming the Earth in low orbit, and they have an ultimate goal of 42,000. When they get up and close to that number, <laughs> I think their service will be a lot better. The satellites are orbiting Earth at 17,000 miles per hour and they each are 250 approximately miles apart. And that's compared to DirecTV which has 10 satellites and Dish Network which has 16. But Starlink works much different than the satellites used for TV service. When you lock on to like a direct TV satellite, you may be on that same satellite all day long. Certain channels are on different satellites, but you're not going to be moving around from one satellite to another very often at all. But with the Starlink system, you're frequently moving from one satellite to another, and it can be sometimes just minutes apart. And that's one of the problems with the Starlink satellite system is that whenever the satellite antenna loses track of the satellite that they're on, they have to switch to another satellite. And during that switching time, there's no internet at all. It just completely goes out. Now, this can only be for as little as less than a minute sometimes two minutes. So you're not going to have a constant internet all day long. There's going to be occasional interruptions like that. And with all these satellites, if they get up to like into the 
forty thousand. <laughs> there is a lot of fear that I think a whole lot of people have, people in the industry, that there could be some satellite collisions, and when that happens, then the particles of the satellite are just going to be flying around space. So I certainly hope <laughs> they are able to avoid any sort of collisions way up there. So the way the internal system works is that when my antenna locks onto one of these satellites, then it sends that signal to the router and the router converts it to Wi-Fi. So the way you pick up the internet on your computer or your cell phone is to have the computer or the cell phone connected to the router by Wi-Fi. It'll show up as just an ordinary Wi-Fi like many others. Now another problem you're going to have fairly often is that you need a wide area of sky for the antenna to look at. With DirecTV, which I have, you only need a very small piece of sky <laughs> in the right spot to see the satellite. But with Starlink, you need to have a broad access. So if there's buildings or trees blocking where you don't have a huge access to the sky, then you're going to have problems with obstructions and then the internet's going to go out until you get that fixed, move it around to a better place where it can get a wider view of the sky. Also, if it's raining heavily, that could be a obstruction problem too, because satellite signals don't like going through water. <laughs> clouds, somehow it gets to clouds just fine, but when it's raining, sometimes that can cause disruptions. Now another problem is that the router has to be plugged into a 120 volt outlet. And the only power that's used, electricity, is the internal workings inside the router and then the motor that moves the antenna around. And I know that motor can easily be powered by a 12 volt. So what I wish they would do, I wish they had done it on my system, I don't know if they're planning on doing this, but I think they really should. Instead of having the whole system powered by 120 volt, have it powered by 12 volt. So I can plug it into a 12 volt outlet. So you don't need a inverter to run it into your RV. And then they can also include a AC adapter. I mean, that is very common. I don't know why they chose to go with 120 volt only, but I know it could work easily on 12 volt. Now they do have another alternative to the antenna type that I have. They have one that permanently mounts on top of an RV. And I considered that, but there's two problems. Number one, it costs I think $2,500, whereas the mobile antenna costs $700. And once you've got it mounted onto your roof, it's a permanent mount. So if you've got some blockage that's blocking the access to the satellite, the only way you're going to fix that is to move the RV around. And sometimes you don't have that option. So it's a little more trouble to pull that antenna out and then put it back inside when you're finished. But that's much better than just not getting any internet service. So the roof type is more convenient when it works. <laughs> when it doesn't work, you got nothing. Now, I got my Starlink system just before I left for my trip to Canada. Right now, I'm in South Texas, Malaquite Beach, right on the ocean side. But this last summer, I drove all the way up to Newfoundland and Labrador, Canada. And I used my Starlink all that way. It worked very well that far north. It was not a problem. Now, I do have Verizon on my cell phone. And before I got the 
Starlink. I've always gotten my internet service through my Verizon cell phone. However, cell phone internet, I'm sure you know, <laughs> is not very reliable. It just depends on where you are at the time, how far you are from a cell phone tower. So I had 4G phone for so long with a lot of problems. About a year ago, I upgraded to my first 5G phone, and I thought, great, this is going to be like super fast. Well, I don't see it. <laughs> I've done speed tests on my cell phone that gave me ratings as high as 500. Mbps, megabits per second. But then when I'm watching videos, I'm sitting there waiting for my video to play. It's buffering. 200, 300, 400, 500 Mbps. And I've got videos that are buffering. <laughs> so I don't think I ever in my life have had true high-speed internet. I've always had to sit and wait for things to do on the internet. And the last time I went to Canada, it was a problem getting cell phone internet service. Verizon does have a plan to coordinate with the Canadian cell phone companies, but you're not going to get much at all of high-speed, what they call high-speed internet. Most of the time, about all I was able to get was map directions with Google Maps. But as far as watching videos or anything else or uploading videos, no, I could not do that with the cell phone internet. So I didn't want to go through that again. And I found it worked very well with the Starlink system way up in Canada. So now let's go to their website. And I'll show you a lot more details about Starlink. On their website here, it shows three different kinds of antennas. A permanent roof mount for buildings. And then there's one specifically for boats. The one for RVs, they're calling Rome, where it has this portable antenna. And here it says the equipment will cost $5.99. Don't let that fool you. <laughs> Once they add tax and shipping, mine was $703. But that's nothing compared to the monthly cost, which is $150. Now, it started out at $110, then they upped it to $135, and then when I got mine nine months ago, it was at $150. $150 times 12, that's $1,800 a year it's going to cost you. Whereas... Well, you know how much cell phone service costs. Much, much less. Mine is like $80 a month for cell phone service. So that's another $150 on top. But that's what it costs to get it. It says, get online in minutes. Just plug and point. See this camper? Now, usually it only takes about a minute or two to get online. But sometimes... It doesn't work and you got to reboot it and start all over again. It doesn't happen a lot, but once in a while that does happen to me. And here is the roof mount antenna where you can use it while you're driving. And there's three parts to the system. The antenna, the router, and the two cables. By the way, Starlink has recently come out with this new style of antenna that has a simple brace to prop it up and then this end right here rests right onto the ground and there is no motor it doesn't move around at all I've not seen this new type of antenna but since it's a permanent set I'm guessing that you're probably going to have to move it around two or three or four times just to get it to the exact spot it needs to be so if you have one of these new antennas, please comment below and let us know how well it's working for you. And by the way, the antenna has a heating element in it. So if you get snow or ice on it, it will melt it so that you can get service. It does use 
50 to 75 watts. So I turn mine off at night to save battery power. The router sends a Wi-Fi signal out up to 185 square meters, 2,000 square feet. And I have been able to get my Wi-Fi service as far as I think about 200 feet away from my RV. Now Starlink does have this cell phone app. So if something's not working, you can go to the app here and it will tell you what's wrong. And it will do a speed test to show you just how fast it is working. 25, that's kind of slow. Then you can do a retest right away and get a completely different number. I tried it again and now it's up to 74. Here's another test where it's up to 111. Now the speed you get is constantly varying all the time. It can get anywhere from 20 to, I think the most I've gotten is about 250 Mbps. Now when it's in the process of switching satellites, it'll be zero. And I don't know why it changes so much. I mean, I can just do several tests in a row we're on one after another and get a wildly different result. Now on their website, there is a lot of help you can get on the website or questions that you have. They really don't have a support telephone number that you can call and talk to somebody. You can email them and get email support. I've only needed to contact them once when I first got it, trying to get it to work in the first place. <laughs> but since then, I have just not needed to call them. It pretty much always works. If it doesn't, you just reboot it, and that usually fixes whatever. Well, folks, that is about all I know. I just have two suggestions for Starlink. Put an on-off switch on the router <laughs> and have it operate off of 12 volt with an AC adapter. And once they get a few more thousand satellites up there, and a few million more customers, I think you should be able to bring the price down to the original 110 or even less. It's not for everyone, especially if you're on a budget. It is expensive, but it's nice to have when that's your best way to get internet. Good day, folks.